Hi and welcome to munshigiri.com. Now this is a tutorial on service tax. So you must be knowing that service tax is an indirect tax. Now service tax has been defined under section 65B subsection 44 of Finance Act 1994. This is service tax. This is defined under section 65B 44 of Finance Act 1994. Now service tax is a tax on rendering or provisioning of services. It is a tax on value addition of services. This is tax on rendering or provisioning of services. is a tax on value addition now service tax was introduced in the year 1994 and initially only three services were covered under service tax now, these three services were telephone non-life insurance and stock broking and there is no separate act on service tax is in force as of now. No separate act on service tax is in force as yet. Now students we have four things. First is the enactment of service tax act then how the amendments are brought in the service tax act then who has the power to charge service tax and next is the administration of service tax now let's deal with all these issues one by one first is the enactment of service tax enactment of service tax now service tax finds its enactment in Finance Act 1994 in Finance Act 1994 and the chapter, four, uh, chapter 5 and chapter 5A of Finance Act 1994 contains the law relating to the service tax. Next is how the amendments are brought in the service tax. Second is amendments in service tax now service tax amendments are being introduced by amending the finance act 1994 from time to time amendments in service tax are being introduced by amending Finance Act 1994 from time to time. Next is the power to charge service tax. Who has the power to charge service tax? Now power to charge service tax vests with the central government. Now, this authority is granted to central government by entry 92C of the union list. Let's note it down. Power to charge service tax vests with central government. So I'm writing CG for that. And this authority is granted. To CG by entry 92C. Now this is this entry 92C is yet to be made effective. This entry 92C is of the union list.
Now service tax is collected under the powers of residuary entry 9297 of the union list. Now this entry is yet to be made effective and currently it is charged under the residuary, residuary entry 97 of the union list. Now the fourth thing under this is administration of service tax. Who administers the service tax? Now service tax is administered by the central excise department under the ministry of finance by central excise department under ministry of finance And certain provisions of Central Excise Act 1944 have been made applicable to the Finance Act 1994. Central Excise Act 1944 have been made applicable to Finance Act 1994. Okay, next is the body or the sources of service tax. Since there is no separate act, service tax derives its powers from the following things. First is the Finance Act 1994. I think we should draw it horizontally. Alright. Let's look at it this way. body or sources of service tax it means that the service tax derives its powers from the following things First is Finance Act 1994. Second is Rules. Third, Notifications. Fourth, Circulars. Fifth orders and sixth is trade notices. Let's look at these one by one. First, we have is Finance Act 1994. Now, all statutory provisions are contained in this Finance Act. Contains all statutory provisions. The statutory provisions are now I'm going to discuss here the statutory provisions. First is chapter 5. These are statutory provisions. First is chapter 5. Now this works as service tax act. That is it contains the provisions on levy, collection of service tax, registration and other procedures like appeals, revision, rectification, interest, penalties and recoveries etc. Works as Service Tax Act. Contains provisions on levy, collection, registration etc of service tax next is chapter 5a chapter 
5 a it contains the provisions relating to advance rulings next is chapter 6a of finance act number 2 2004 chapter 6 of finance act number 2 2004 now this was introduced due to change in the government it had introduced cess education cess at the rate of 2% on service tax this is education cess at the rate of 2% was levied and the next is chapter 6 of this is finance act 2007 under this the secondary higher education cess was introduced secondary higher education cess at the rate of 1% was introduced so this was about finance act 1994 coming to the rules under this is the first thing is that the central government is empowered to make rules under section 94 and 96i of finance act 1994 so who is empowered to make rules the central government cg empowered to make rules empowered to make rules under section 94 and 96i of finance act 1994 Now, so service tax rules, 1994, the various rules that have been issued are like your point of taxation rules, servet credit rules, and all the rules have been framed under this this thing only. So, uh, another thing here is that the rules contrary to the act will always be void. A rule can never go, never go against the act. So, just write it down somewhere. rules contrary to act will be void next is the notifications again notification the central government is empowered to issue the notifications now why the notifications are issued issued by central government and now notifications are issued to declare the date of enforceability of service tax provisions first is to declare date of enforceability of service tax provisions to grant or withdraw exemptions and to make amendments resigned rules relating to service tax to make amendments or resigned rules relating to service tax and any ancillary matter now we have two sources of notification first is chapter 5 of finance act 1994 under section 93 and 94 and another source is chapter 5a that is about advance rulings and that is section 96i coming to circulars circulars are issued by cbec that is your central board of excise and customs issued by cbec and the purpose is as follows the first is to explain the scope of taxable services explain scope of taxable services
and to provide clarification regarding intention of legislature and to provide clarification regarding intention of legislature next is orders orders can either be issued by cbec or by central government issued by either cbec or central government now power is derived from rule 3 of service tax rules 1994 and cbec derives its power power derived from rule 3 of service tax rules 1994 it empowers rule 3 yes okay now it empowers cbc to issue orders defining the jurisdiction defining the jurisdiction of central excise officers central excise officers for the purpose of service tax for the purpose of service tax coming to central government the power is derived from section 95 power derived from uh, this is same section 95 of finance act 1994 now it empowers it empowers central government to issue orders government to issue orders necessary to remove difficulties which may arise while implementing the amendments which may arise while implementing amendments amendments in service tax laws next are the trade notices trade notices are issued by central excise or service tax commissionerates issued by central excise oblique service tax commissionerates now trade notices are issued for two purposes basically the first one being to provide the field officers with necessary guidelines with respect to implementation and administration of service tax laws i'll have to write it down somewhere else let me write it here also purpose is first is to provide field officers field officers with necessary guidelines with necessary guidelines with respect to implementation and administration of service tax laws implementation and administration of service tax laws and second is to disseminate information in trade disseminate information in trade so these were the various sources of service tax from where the service tax derived its powers coming to 
the extent and scope of service tax law. Extent and scope of service tax law. This is defined under section 64 of Finance Act 1994. And this question appeared in your May 10 and November 10. It has appeared two times in the examination for two marks. So this is your uh, section 64 of Finance Act 1994. Extent and scope of service tax law, and this is appeared in May 10 and November 10 for two marks. What the times? Okay, so first of all, let's talk about the extent of service tax law. First is the extent. It extends to whole of India except the state of Jammu and Kashmir. Extends to whole of India except JNK. Now next is what constitutes India? So next we are going to define India. So second comes is India. Now India is defined under section 65B subsection 27. It says that India means five things under this India means first one being territory of union as per article 1 of constitution that is the states and the union territories territory of union as per article 1 of constitution one of constitution that is the state and union territories this was first second is it's TW CS EEZ and MZ TW territorial waters CS continental shelf EEZ exclusive economic zone and MZ is your maritime zone third is TW SBSS I'm writing it down it means seabed first is seabed and subsoil underlying the territorial waters seabed S before seabed and SS subsoil underlying the territorial waters fourth is territory and territorial waters and above this write AS it means that airspace AS for airspace airspace above its territory and territorial territorial waters fifth point is installations structures and vessels located in continental shelf of India and exclusive economic zone installations structures vessels located in continental shelf of India and exclusive economic zone for the purpose of prospecting extraction prospecting or extraction or extraction or production of mineral oil or natural gas 
and supply thereof. Now we need to define the continental shelf and exclusive economic zone of India. Now this part, the this thing, the continental shelf and the exclusive economic zone. These things. Third is the continental shelf and EEZ of India. Now this was defined under notification number 14 oblique 2010 oblique 2010 the central government has extended the provisions of chapter 5 of finance act 1994 to the following areas in continental shelf and exclusive economic zone has extended the provisions of Finance Act 1994 to following areas in Continental Shelf and Exclusive Economic Zone. Now let's look at the area and the purpose for which it is extended. area and the purpose for which it is extended first is whole of continental shelf and exclusive economic zone of india and the purpose is any service provided for all activities pertaining to construction of installation structures and vessels now for the same purpose for the purpose of prospecting or extraction of this right for the purpose of prospecting or extraction or production of mineral oil or natural gas and supply thereof. So this is all activities any service provided for all activities any service provided for all activities pertaining to construction of the thing construction of installations structure so I'm marking it E here and marking a star here Let me mark it with black pen now this is same all right so construction of e means you have to copy it from here installation structures vessels located in continental shelf for the like continental shelf and ez we are seeing this thing only so you can skip this part for the purpose of ex, uh, prospecting or extraction or production of mineral oil and supply and natural uh, supply of natural gas thereof now this was area whole of continental shelf and exclusive economic zone of India. Coming to the second part that has been defined under this is. Second is now first we were covering whole of continental shelf and EEZ and now we are covering only the installation structures etc. Second is the area has been shortened now. installations structures and vessels within continental shelf and exclusive economic zone of India for the purpose of same purpose prospecting or ex extraction of 
for the purpose of prospecting extraction or production of mineral oil and natural gas of mineral oil and natural gas and the purpose for this is any service provided or to be provided by or such installations any service provided or to be provided by or to such installations structures vessels and for supply of any goods connected with such activity Now next is this part. India extends to whole of India. India we have seen. Now we will see this part. Except Jammu and Kashmir. That that means it does not extend to Jammu and Kashmir. This is the fourth th th third fourth heading. It does not extend to J and K. The services provided in the territorial jurisdiction of state of Jammu and Kashmir are not liable to service tax, and this is as per place of provision of service rules 2012. And now the important thing here is that the location of service provider or service recipient does not matter. It's the services provided in the state of Jammu and Kashmir that matters, and not the location of service provider or the service receiver coming to next heading under this is fifth this is taxable territory taxable territory and this is defined under section 65b subsection 55 of the finance act 1994 this is the territory to which the provisions of this chapter apply is taxable territory territory to which provisions of this chapter apply the next is the non taxable territory non taxable territory this is defined under section 65 b subsection 35 what is a non taxable territory territory which is outside the territory which is outside the taxable territory it is a non taxable territory territory outside taxable territory so this was about your extent and scope of service tax law as we have seen coming to another part is which is also appeared in exam once for four marks and another time for two marks which is the salient features of levy of service tax it appeared in november 2002 for four marks and in november 2008 for two marks salient features of levy of service tax
नवंबर 2002 और नवंबर 2008. So first of all, define service under this. Service. The service is defined under section 65B44 of Chapter 5 of Finance Act 1994. Section 65B44 of Chapter 5 of Finance Act 1994. And it covers all activities except which are specifically exempted. Covers all activities except those specifically exempted from ambit of service tax specifically exempted next is the scope of service tax second is the scope the section 66 B is the charging section section 66 B which is the charging section now this section provides that service tax levied on all services provided or to be provided in the taxable territory service tax levied on all services provided or to be provided it means agreed to be provided in taxable territory in taxable territory other than the services in the negative list other than the services in the negative list negative list is under section 66 D that will do later on so let's just define negative list here where is negative list is I was talking about it section 66 D and 17 heads of services have been specifically speci specified in the negative list. Next is exempted services. Exempted services are those services that are otherwise taxable but exempted wide notification issued by the central government. Taxable but exempt wide notification issued by CG ok this was exempted services next is the declared services which have specifically been declared to be services declared services declared services have been defined under section 66 E this is section 66 E and 19 services have been specified in this section which are declared services next is taxable territory the services provided in taxable territory are liable to service tax section 66 C empowers central government to make rules for administration of place of provision of services the central government has notified the place of provision of service rules 2014 in this regard services provided in taxable territory in taxable territory are liable to service tax next is principles of interpretation Principles of interpretation has been provided under section 66F. 
These principles apply whenever services have to be treated differentially for any reason and also for determining the taxability of bundled services. This is basically for the taxability of bundled services. Bundled services are when two services are bundled together. They can either be a natural bundling or an artificial bundling which we will see later on in the tutorials. Now next is date of de determination of rate of tax. Date of determination of rate of tax. Value of taxable service. and exchange rate. This is dealt in section 67A. Point of taxation rules 2011 have been framed for this purpose. Section 67A. Point of taxation rules 2011 have been framed for this purpose. Next is rate of service tax. Now rate of service tax has been changed to 14% and now there is no education says in higher secondary and higher education says but for your exam purpose it's 12.36% only. This is under section 66B. Under section 66B. Rate of service tax is 12% of value of service and this is to be increased by 2% of education says plus 1% of secondary higher education says so effectively this is 12.36% next is payment of service tax payment of service tax that is who is the person liable to pay service tax the liability to pay service tax either falls on the service provider or the service receiver either service provider or service receiver service receiver in the case of reverse charge or shared between service provider and service receiver shared between service provider and service receiver this is under partial reverse charge or joint charge partial reverse charge or joint charge next is valuation of services Services are valued in accordance with section 67. Section 67 and these are read with service tax determination of value rules. Determination of value rules 2006. Next is Senvet credit. Credit of service tax and excise duty across goods and services is as per Senvet Credit Rules 2004. As per Senvet Credit Rules 2004. And the last under the salient features is procedural compliance.
provisions have been made for registration special audit appeals penalties prosecution for non compliance of provisions of the act and the rules provisions have been made for registration special audit appeals penalties prosecution for non compliance of provisions of act and rules so these were the salient features of levy of service tax next is the essentials for charge of service tax so let's discuss these orally so uh, the essentials for charge of service tax are first thing is that the service should have been provided or agreed to be provided this is important next is provided for a consideration that is there should be something in return for the service provided so consideration we are going to see later when we will see the definition of service that we are going to see just after the essentials next is service should be provided by one person to another person now self service is not considered as service there 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 has to be two persons at least service must be provided by one person to another person and service should be provided in the taxable territory as per the place of provision of service rules 2012 as we had seen that services provided in the state of jammu and kashmir were not liable to service tax the reason was the service was not provided in the taxable territory taxable territory we have already seen and next is service must be service must not be specified in the negative list now the services specified in the negative list uh, you are not liable to pay service tax on these services so if a service has been specified in negative list so you will not pay service tax on that service and service tax is collected in such manner as may be prescribed in accordance with service tax rules 1994 Okay now let's look at the definition of service this question appeared in your uh, november 2013 exam for 6 marks so it it did not basically say define service question or something else it was something like mentioned briefly the specific exclusions from the definition of term service as given under section 65b 44 of the act so let's just look at what service is and how you can remember it because these questions are generally asked in the exam the definitions part you people don't learn it but they do ask all right service section 65b subsection 44 of finance act 1994 of course now this service is defined in three parts very important first is the meaning second is the exclusion exclusion and third is the explanation so you have service in three parts first is the meaning part second is the exclusion part that is what all shall be excluded from the definition of service which means we will not consider these as service third is the explanation the explanation of certain terms has been given under this okay so let's look at these one by one first is the meaning what is the meaning of service now it says service means any activity for consideration service means any activity for what consideration
by one person to another. I told you about this in the characteristics also when I was talking about essentials for the charge of service tax that self service is not a service and service should flow from one person to another person and this is and includes a declared service. Includes a declared service. This was the meaning part of service. Second is the exclusion part. That is, it does not include. Definition says service means any activity for consideration by one person to another and includes a declared service. This exclusive is not written. This this thing I'm writing on my own. Definition continues as but shall not include. But shall not include image. Now what image is we'll see it. I for immovable property, movable property, actionable claim, fees received in the court, and E is employer employee relationship. We'll see it later on. We're just looking at basically this part. What is exclusion? What is explanation? How you're going to remember it? Third is explanations. There are basically four explanations in this. Explanation. Four explanations. First is CA. These are the short forms for remembering it. I am going to cover this in detail. Second is MCA. Third is deemed distinct persons. And fourth is bar established by any person. Bar is branch, A is agency and R is representational office. This A has again three parts. First is MPMLA, second is CF and third is chairperson or government bodies. Now let's look at these. First of all, the exclusions from the service that is these will not be regarded as services. We are going to see this part now image that I was talking about. Exclusions but shall not include part of your definition of service. Exclusions. that is these are not regarded as service these are not regarded as service let's make the diagram like this all right exclusions So, uh, this was image I for immovable property, M for movable property. Actionable claim This G is not actually for government this is for court or tribunal, but just to uh, Make this short kit. I've written it. This is court or tribunal And this E is your employer employee relationship Coming to the first one, immovable property. 
इट इज अ ट्रांसफर ऑफ टाइटल इन गुड्स और इमुएबल प्रॉपर्टी ए ट्रांसफर ऑफ टाइटल इन गुड्स और इमुएबल प्रॉपर्टी by way of sale gift or any other manner it means that this shall not be regarded as a service and accordingly no service tax shall be levied on the same now uh, we see this term here transfer of Title and immovable property. Now, what do these two terms mean? First is let's take up the transfer of title. Now, transfer of title under the transfer of title, there must be change in ownership. For example, if you give your property on rent, it would not involve transfer of title, right? the ownership will not change from one person to another person and therefore this will be liable to service tax so in case of transfer of title the ownership must change from one person to another person next is goods now every kind of movable property goods are defined as every kind of movable property and this includes what does it includes it includes securities growing crops grass and things attached to or forming part of land which are agreed to be severed before sale or under contract of sale now the word securities has been defined it has the same meaning as as has been assigned under securities contracts regulation act 1956 this was about goods now we have discussed transfer of title we have discussed goods next is immovable property what is an immovable property now the definition states that immovable property includes land benefits to arise out of land and things attached to the earth or permanently fastened to anything attached to the earth this was about the immovable property coming to the second under this is movable property movable property is such transfer delivery or supply of any goods which is deemed to be sale within the meaning of article 36629a of the constitution now movable property is such transfer delivery or supply of any goods which is deemed to be sale within the meaning of article 36629a of the constitution now goods i have already defined to you what goods are every kind of movable property and includes several things including your securities right next is actionable claim actionable claim is a transaction in money or actionable claim this is a transaction in money now we have an example of actionable claim is unsecured debts or a uh, right to participate in the draw to be held in lottery these are all actionable claims and actionable claims are not services so these are excluded from the definition of service and no service tax shall be levied on the same next is court or tribunal that is fees taken in any court or tribunal established under any law for the time being in force this will also not be liable to service tax fees taken in any court or tribunal established 
under any law for the time being in force. For the time being in force. Next is employer employee relationship. Now, a provision of service by an employee to the employer in course of or in relation to his employment. So, this will also not fall under service. So, uh, okay, where is this thing? Service. So, we are done this meaning part. Activity for consideration, we are going to do a little later after completing the explanation part of it. So, we are done with the meaning part, the exclusion part I have just told you and now what we are going to do is this explanation part, this four things. The meaning of CA, MCA, deemed distinct persons and this branch agency and representational office established by any person. Now, we are going to do this in detail. All right, the explanations, right? Yes. Explanations. We have four explanations that I've already told you. Now, this is just a way of remembering it. The CA, MCA, and all. It's not actually like this. It's first is CA. And we did three things under CA. First was MP, MLA. Second was CF, and third was chairperson or government bodies. Public government bodies. So now first under this is the functions or duties performed by constitutional authorities. What you mean by CA is constitutional authority. functions or duties these are just explanations all right that have been added in the definition of your service functions or duties performed by constitutional authorities constitutional authorities and these are not covered in service that means they will not be liable for service tax, not covered in service. It further specifies that the following services and duties not to be regarded as service. The following duties not to be regarded as service. First one under being is A part. Now I am talking about this A is this MP MLA functions performed by MP MLA etc. Functions performed by MP MLA etc. Now members of parliament, state legislative, panchayats, municipalities, and other local authorities who receive any consideration in performing functions of that office or as such member that it will not be regarded as service so no service takes on the same this was first second is CF this one this was MP MLA we have covered second is CF that is constitutional functionaries duties performed by constitutional functionaries duties performed by CF constitutional functionaries now duties performed by any person who holds any post in pursuance of provisions of constitution in that capacity so this will also not be regarded as your service and third is duties performed by chairperson or members of government bodies duties performed by chairperson or members of 
government bodies now duties performed by chairperson or members of government bodies or a director in a body established by central government or state government or local authority and who is not deemed as an employee before the commencement of this act so this was covered under this c part this was first explanation that we did second is first was ca second was mca now coming to what mca is mca is money changing activities this is explanation to mca mca is money changing activities for consideration money changing activities etc for consideration or this is important for consideration now money changing activities for consideration this is not transaction in money so this shall be regarded as service and shall be liable to service tax this is not transaction in money and shall be regarded as service now banks or authorized dealers convert currency it's simple if commission is charged by them on such conversion then it is taxable under the service tax if commission is not charged then it is not ta uh, not taxable it's it's very simple now and only the commission part is taxable commission charged by the bank or the authorized dealers is taxable and not the entire portion the service will be taxable if amount is charged as service charges for conversion of cash or one currency into another currency it it's a simple you uh, you go and get your currency changed and if you are asked for any consideration or, or some service charges that will be liable to service tax if there is no consideration for the same it will not be liable for liable to service tax this was mca third is deemed distinct persons deemed distinct persons and says body of persons and it its members shall be treated as distinct persons body of persons and its members treated as deemed distinct persons as deemed distinct persons and if a person has two establishments one in the taxable territory and other in the non taxable territory territory they shall be treated as distinct persons this was first and second is a person has two establishments one in taxable territory and other in non taxable territory and other in non taxable territory they shall be treated as distinct persons next was bar established by any person there is branch agency or representational office agency or representational office established by any person by any person now if if a person in any territory carrying on business through branch agency representational office 
then it shall be treated as having an establishment in that territory if a person in any territory carrying on business through branch or agency or representational office then it shall be treated as having an establishment in that territory now this covers your definition of service so what we did was we uh, looked at the meaning of service then we looked at the exclusion part and then the explanation part now under the definition of service and the meaning part of the definition of service we had seen that service means any activity for consideration right so uh, now let's look at these two terms what activity means and what consideration means was any activity for consideration for consideration by one person to another to another and includes a declared service now you see that the activity and consideration will go hand in hand if there is activity and no consideration it will not be covered in service same way if there is consideration and no activity again it will not be covered in service take your example of charity charity is not taxable there is activity that is charity but there is no consideration in return for the same so hence this is not taxable however if charity is for consideration it will become taxable it's as simple as that now let's look at what activity means this thing this activity now this has not been activity has not been defined in finance act 1994 but it includes an act or deed or work done operation carried out execution of an act provision of a facility and forbearance to act if you see that forbearance to an act is also an activity which will be liable to service tax if there is consideration we'll look at an example for this little letter for bearings to anna so uh, we have covered this activity portion now we'll go and look out for what consideration means this is consideration consideration has a means and exclusive definition which means that it has a means part and it has a includes part 
consideration is a means and inclusive definition consideration means oh sorry and consideration includes first is consideration means it says consideration means everything received or receivable it means everything received either received or receivable in return for a provision of service for a provision of services consideration it means consideration and what it includes it includes monetary payment that is consideration received in money form it includes non monetary consideration or non monetary payment it means consideration in kind or you can say compensation in kind for example supply of goods and services in return for the provision of service or doing an act in return for a provision of service now money value of non monetary consideration it is to be determined in accordance with your service tax determination of value rules 2006 that have been framed and also the consideration includes your deferred consideration so first second and third is your deferred consideration now under the definition of service now we have seen activity and we have also seen consideration now let's look at a few things let's discuss these orally i mean not write these write down these things okay now activities that are carried out without consideration they are outside the scope of service obviously i told you that activity and consideration they'll go hand in hand if if one thing is missing then it will not be considered as service let's look at a few uh, examples of things let's take an example for grant now if the grant is given for a research where the researcher is under no obligation to carry out a particular research then it would not be a consideration for such research accordingly not liable to service tax okay next thing is consideration may be paid by any person and not necessarily the receiver of the service it means that as long as there is consideration in the contract it does not matter who has actually furnished it and there should be a direct link between the activity and consideration the concept of activity for consideration involves an element of contractual relationship uh, now a few uh, a few very famous examples Let, let's look at these first is the artists suppose the artists are performing on road and the passer passers by uh, may drop some coins to such person performing on the road so this will not be taxable however if an artist performs on stage for some amount and and some for, for some fixed amount now the performance becomes an activity for consideration again now since it is an activity for consideration it will be taxable next is fines and penalties it's not an activity for consideration it's not taxable government taxes not a consideration for service so not taxable and again uh, this thing i have already told you that there there has to be two person required for taxability service must be provided by one person to another person self service is outside the purview of the service tax and it's not considered as a service all right so this was about it
Next is the uh, a question that appeared in your exam in November 2005. It was concept of abatement in respect of sale element under various forms. Let me take up this thing. Concept of abatement. It appeared in your November 2005 for two marks. Now, what is an abatement? Abatement is nothing but an exemption granted in respect of value of taxable services. Abatement is exemption granted in respect of value of taxable services. For example, in case of abatement, taxable value of services computed as follows. is computed as follows gross value of taxable service this is inclusive of value of goods and materials sold Suppose this is rupees 1000 and from this we will deduct the abatement. Abatement at specified percentage. Suppose the abatement is 60%. So we will deduct 60% out of it that is 600 and 400 becomes the taxable value on which service tax is imposed. Now this was the concept of abatement which also appeared in your exam. Uh, now this is it for today's session and in the next session I will be covering up the negative list of your services. Alright, thank you for watching. Have a nice time.